I'm Susie Whitworth. I'm going to talk today about influenza vaccines in particular. At Cook Children's, we have two different flu vaccines for our employees. One is flu zone and the other is flu block. Flu zone is made by injecting the virus into chicken eggs. The chicken eggs reproduce the virus and then the fluid from the chicken eggs is removed and it's filtered and it's inactivated and split and it's put into a vaccine. The second vaccine is called flu block. That's made where the flu virus is used with worm cells in a petri dish to reproduce the protein called hemagglutinin. And that protein is what is taken out of the petri dish and put into flu vaccine. So the two different vaccines are used. I am often asked about getting flu from a flu shot, and the answer is no. When you get a flu vaccine with the nasal mist, that is live attenuated flu, flu virus. So in theory, you could catch the flu from the flu mist. There is very minimal chance of that happening, and there are really, really very few cases of that ever happening. It's a very safe live attenuated vaccine. But we are using the flu shot here, and there is no live virus in the flu shot. You cannot get the flu from a flu shot. And I think what happens is when people get a flu shot, they feel a little bit sore and achy that night, and they could even have a low-grade fever, and that kind of stuff is gone after a day or two. So people say, I really felt like I had the flu after the flu shot, but I think they just had some of those minor side effects. As opposed to when you really catch influenza, you're looking at high fever and being in bed for a week. Very different. So I think some people feel like the flu shot did something, but it wasn't that it gave them the flu. The other thing is I think when people get the flu shot, a week later they can get a cold from anything. And they may say, wow, here it is, you know, and they may call it the flu when it really wasn't. So you cannot, it is not possible to get the flu from one of the flu shots. The flu shot contains no live flu virus. The flu vaccine that is made in a chicken egg, the flu zone, could have particles from the chicken egg in it. That is in the microscopic, microscopic level. The flu block vaccine could have microscopic particles of the worm cells or another virus that's part of the process called baculovirus in tiny quantities. It's important to know that there are vegetarians concerned about consuming animal products in the vaccine. And what you should know is all of us, vegetarian or carnivore, carnivore have animal products that we ingest all day, every day. If you buy frozen broccoli at the grocery store, the FDA allows a certain number of insects in that package of frozen broccoli. And that sounds gross, but all the time we are injecting tiny animal particles in what we eat, and that's, that is universal. And the amount that you would get from a vaccine is well below anything that the FDA approves for our food chain. The flu vaccine has nothing to do with aborted fetal cells. It is not processed. It is never part of fetal tissue for, for production of flu vaccine. It's the, the worm cells for flu block and the chicken egg for flu zone, um, but they do not have anything to do with aborted fetal cells. Some of the other vaccines in routine use do use aborted fetal cells that were obtained in the 1960s from an elective abortion. And so some of the other routine vaccines do have that process in their history and those same cell lines are still used, but that does not involve the flu vaccines that are given. The serious risks are extremely rare. Anaphylaxis is where you have an overwhelming, life-threatening allergic response to anything, whether that would be penicillin or a bee sting, 
it's an overwhelming allergic response and you can die from anaphylaxis, although often that does not happen. Anaphylaxis happens with any vaccine about one out of a million doses. So that could happen, that's extremely rare. The other thing that could happen is the development of Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a temporary paralysis. It's terrible, it lasts for several weeks. It usually completely resolves and often um, people get completely back to normal. The death rate from Guillain-Barre is minuscule. Most people survive that. And that again is about one in a million. Settled science is an important concept to grasp when you think about vaccines. There are some things in science that we're not finished studying yet. And then there are some things that are old and settled. We know that when the oral polio vaccine came out in the late 1950s, that the cases of polio immediately went to almost zero within 12 to 24 months. It is settled science that the polio vaccine prevents polio. And that's why there are a whole bunch of us that are not in wheelchairs today. And without the vaccine, we would be. So there's settled science. Another piece of settled science is flu shots. We know it's a fact that flu shots prevent hospitalizations, severe illness, deaths, ICU admissions, all of those things. It's proven that if you immunize your population, you prevent tens of thousands of those things. And that is settled science. There are some things about COVID disease, for example, that are not settled science. We don't know how long immunity to COVID disease is gonna last if you get COVID disease. That's not settled yet. And we don't know yet how long a vaccine will be efficacious. That's not settled yet. But when we talk about the influenza vaccines, it's settled. It's scientific fact that it will reduce those, those things that we just talked about. And it's important to separate the two in your mind, that settled science is, is something that everyone is agreeable to and confirms in the scientific community.